Hey Black Shatters, it's time to talk about the LG G4, LG's flagship OLED model. The reason behind my purchase, the features, positives, the negatives, and whether you should buy, avoid, or hold. The reason I bought this TV was because my previous TV, LG C9, ended up getting some burning issues after two years. It's disappointing because I've had some bad lucks with the LG TV. I've had a B9 in the past, I've had C9, they've all had screen issues. So I jumped ship to the Samsung QLED TV, but I couldn't stand the blooming. So I came back and ended up buying the G4. I opted for the 77 inch model with a wall mount, but you can, if you want, you can also buy a model that is a smaller than 77 inch, 65 inch, 55 inch. You have options of wall mount or TV stand. So if you can't wall mount your TV, go for the smaller option. It won't go wrong, but it looks, the wall mount option is probably the better option. It looks absolutely gorgeous, just fitted into the TV. It looks like a photo frame and the chrome finishing around the TV is amazing. So out of the box, the TV delivers a perfect, perfect picture quality. It's also crazy how LG keeps on improving the picture quality. The TV looks great from all angles and it's perfect fit for rooms of all sizes. Previously, I have my picture setting to cinema or try to change to customize the setup. But this TV, out of the box, just put it on filmmaker mode or cinema mode, it'd be fine. I was super impressed with the filmmaker mode. Every time it detected a movie, it would just went from a full screen to 16 by 9 to give you that movie feeling. And then when it doesn't detect it, it'd go back to the previous setting. I thought the TV did that really, really well and it was a joy to watch. The other thing the TV excels at is gaming. There are certain presets for the gaming mode and can be further optimized through the gaming optimizer. Out, again, out of the box, you just connect to PS5 and the, and the TV delivers. I mainly play FIFA and Call of Duty and they look amazing. There's hardly any input lag. I don't know if you know, if you're playing like football games, just running towards goal and then you have a shot, this little ball trial goes past the keeper. Those kind of things really annoy me on a TV because you pay a lot of money and then all you end up doing is that the TV struggles the minute there's some, some motion. But this TV doesn't do that. And that's really, really awesome. I'm hugely surprised by how well this TV sounds, how f despite how flat it is. I have connected it to my 5.1 surround sound, the Sonos surround sound, where the e -up connection located on the HDMI 2 port. The TV does have four, four ports, but the e -up port is only on the HDMI 2 connection. The good thing this year though, is the TV can pass the Dolby Atmos through to your surround systems. In the previous TVs that I've had, I had to go onto the Sonos app, play around with the configurations or airplay the songs to enjoy Dolby Atmos. This TV, when it detects the spatial sound, it does pass a signal. Typically like, you know, when you are watching an HDR, the little um, pop-up comes up to say HDR enabled or HLG enabled. It will, it will do the same thing with Atmos. So if you do have a 5.1 surround system with spatial audio supporting, supported, do consider this TV. I've also tested connecting my um, Amazon Fire Stick 4K and every time I switch to the Fire Stick, the TV detects the HDR and brings its own configuration. I've played around with it. Sometimes it being on a 4K on, on, on Amazon Fire Stick does make the picture quality bad. But again, you can set up all of these things and each port can be customizable. Um, for its own output source. So if you want the PS5 to have a different picture quality versus Netflix versus your Amazon Fire Stick, you can do all of that. And on top of that, you can you can also connect your smart devices. You can, you, the TV supports AirPlay, the TV supports Chromecast, which is really good. If, you're, if your family have two different phones and you wanna share whatever's on your phone onto your TV, you no longer have to worry about, oh, I don't have the Chromecast, so I cannot do that both. You could do both of them and it's all on the home hub screen. And the last thing I enjoyed was um, the ability, how there's so much space in a 77 inch and you can switch from just, just watching Netflix or watching or playing game to combine them into a multi-screen. So the multi-screen view that can put two HDMI sources together or you could you could decide to change it into a PC dual monitor. Um, for example, you could have a you could have YouTube on one side, you could have PS5 on the other side to help you complete an objective. The TV does that really, really well. And also, if you're a big fan of using the LG ThinQ devices, you might have an LG fridge, you might have a LG washing machine, and you might use the LG ThinQ app. You can all integrate that in the TV and use the home hub view to bring everything in one place. Um, I find it quite enjoyable when I, when I know when my washing's done. Despite the amazing picture qualities, despite some of the out of the box functions the TV has, it's not fair to talk about just the positives without talking about the negatives. 
was that Key TV is capable of doing many great things. It does struggle with quite a few stuff. Firstly, what I've noticed was it struggles with slow panning shots. So if you're watching programs or TV shows that has slow panning shots, the TV is going to struggle with that. And it's quite evident on a bigger screen. It might be the same issue with the previous models, but I've gone from a 65 to a 77 inch. So I do see that's, that's very noticeable. So that's something. To, so, so if you're really into that, if that bothers you, that's something to sort of take note of. Another negative for me is the screen glare. First, let me be clear. The MLA technology delivers big on this TV. The brightness is amazing. It's the best brightness I've had on an LG TV. And the anti-glare screen is supposed to work in combination with the um, MLA technology. But I, what I found was it just didn't do enough. My my setup is just, just similar like this. I've got my TV here and I'm to, behind there's a wall and then I've got a bay window to the right. And depending on some angles, I still just, just kept on seeing the bay windows, no matter no matter what type of stuff I'm watching, it could be a bright video. It's really worse when it's a dull video, um, but I don't think that the screen glare is as good as it seems. Having tested the Samsung TV for a week, um, I think the Samsung does a much better job of even peak brightness, but that's a, that's a QLED feature. But Samsung does really, really better job of the anti-glare. You can see that on the Samsung phones and stuff like that. I think Samsung do lead the, lead the way in that technology. And also this, this I've, got a, I've got a problem with this brightness because whilst the brightness is really, really good and it delivers big time, it's too bright, especially when it's when it's nighttime and you're watching in low light or, you know, it's, it's, it's early morning and you, you've come on, the TV does just, just, just it's too bright and it almost takes you back like, oh, um, it does really bright. I mean, there are settings to sort of tune all of that down in the, uh, within the TV. But then again, if you're, if you're turning that for one thing and and that might not be fit for another uh, another TV show. So I, I don't really turn that. But I do find things super, super bright. I think that's, that's probably why LG has decided to sort of add in things like kids care and, and all the panel care. And, and the kids care is quite interesting because th they've they've got like the blue lighting uh, you could turn off to sort of help uh, help with the kids eyesight and stuff like that but but it does make your eyes feel a lot sensitive really late at night or early in the morning and really depends if you just, just try to avoid watching anything with strobe lighting effects and stuff like that at night time another big 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 downside of this tv is the UI. Man, what have LG done with this UI? There's just too much going on. It can be slow, it can be clunky, it can freeze. Yes, there's, they've also baked in the option to have like free channels. I get that, like TV is all about delivering picture quantities. TV is all about, you know, keeping people fixated with that. But LG, you have to calm down. All the free things that you throw at us, like we, when you unbox a TV, you, you are, you're accepting to all the terms and conditions, which means you're by default accepting all these apps to be installed on your TV. And I'm not really sure what these apps do. Sometimes it just ends up crashing the TV. You'd be busy just navigating across the menus and the TV crashes and then you have to restart. And I've had that happen quite a lot. It could be LG's commercial agreements with some of their partners like Amazon Prime, Rakuten, uh, whoever that may be. And, and LG might be getting um, some money off the back of that. But it does it does get in the way, especially you you have this features tab. You have this, sorry, not the features. You have the favorites tab where you could move the the apps that you like um, into the favorite section, and then you can also delete the apps that you don't like. But for some reason, you cannot delete every single app. You you've got some apps that are completely baked in. For example, you've got the Alexa. You cannot delete that. You've got the LG channels, you cannot delete that, but you can delete some of the ones that you downloaded. Some of them preloaded onto the TV, you can't delete that. And I think they, they do a lot of, um, I think they hog a lot of memory in the background. That's probably one of the reasons why it crashes. And, and it just feels a bit like LG is just force feeding a lot of these stuff into the users. And it's probably not why, why we ended up buying this TV. And let's talk about, just along this line, let's talk about some of the other issues that could be introduced by some of these apps 
and LG force feeding a lot of these things. If many of you remember, it had an issue with the HDMI 2 connection. So anyone that was connecting their sound system via the HDMI 2 or anyone that needed the HDMI 2 to sort of pass video and audio started getting distorted videos. There is a, there is a lot of um, information about that on the AV forums. Basically, for a few months, there were some issues with this TV where if you go onto the HDMI 2 ER, the pictures look blurry, jaded out. It took LG months to release a, uh, release a software update. Luckily, they fixed a lot of these things with the software update. Be mindful of just what apps you're downloading, how many times you've got software updates on, I mean, software, whilst a software update can fix the issues, it can also introduce the issues. And I'm happy to say it's fixed the HDMI to issue, but um, I'm not in any hurry to sort of continue um, updating the apps because I don't know what these software updates do. The, it might be fixing one thing, it might be introducing something, it might be sort of uh, adding on a lot more restrictions. Please, Elgi, I beg you not to do that. Go back to the old UI where we'll all be happy um, with a very much cleaner look. As I worked on this review, there are a few things I could not exactly say whether it's positive or negative. It's mainly because these aren't functions that I'm using. So it's, it wouldn't be fair on uh, fair on me to say some functions are positive just because it, on paper it sounds positive because they're a really, really good feature if you use them. But if, if I don't use them, I don't need to slate that. So I just want to sort of highlight some of these things. So when you initially set up the TV, you go through this AI sound and picture quality. And I have to say, the AI sound was amazing. Despite the size of the TV, the TV was able to add a lot of clarity to the sound and it was able to sort of clear a clearer sound. It's almost like you've got a very, like a budgeted smart speaker connected to it. So I thought that was really, good, really good. But then I went through the AI picture selections where it given me a few pictures to say, okay, here are the four pictures. What do you like out of this? It'd be hill, hills and skies and flowers. And the output, I didn't agree with that. Like I said earlier in this review, just go with the filmmaker mode or the cinema mode. You'll be completely fine. But I didn't use some of these features. And so I don't know whether it's a positive or negative. It might you might think it's 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 positive. You might think it's amazing. The other thing I would the the another feature I didn't use was the Alexa and 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 LG AI because I've actually got a a physical Alexa device that helped me with all of these things that I require from Alexa, and then the LG AI just kept reducing the TV volume because it kept thinking I am talking even when there's something coming from the TV. It would think oh, I've said something, you know, I've initiated the problem and I didn't do that. And I overall, overall I found it really annoying. I, mean, I did try, I did give my best to say, hey, LG, switch the switch off the TV, hey, LG, change the channel, reduce the volume. But pick up the remote and doing it was a lot faster because I don't know what it is with my accent. Most of the time it ended up doing something else. So that was another thing I didn't have time to test. The other thing which I thought was very peculiar was on the on the on the top of the UI, you've had you've had spaces for work, you've got spaces for sports. It's almost like a curated section for some of the things to sort of simplify. LG does want this TV to be much more than just a TV, a traditional TV. They want this to be your workstation. They want this to be your gaming hub. They want this to be your news hub. But when I tested some of the some of the features, it, it it's not it's not all it seems. Because the work hub allows you to integrate some of your Google and 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 Hotmail features features in the TV, and when you sign, it does look like there's an app. But when you sign up, it just opens it on um, on a web browser, which anyone could have done that. I mean, the easiest way, if you want to check your emails on TV, just just screencast it. You you don't you don't need to you don't need to log in. It's, it felt like a gimmick. It felt like it might be useful for somebody, but it's definitely not useful for me. But there are other features that I've absolutely not touched, um, which I'm more keen on touching. And depending on the comments in this video, um, I'll be able to sort of share some of that. By the way, if, you, if you're still here, if you're still interested in what I'm saying, do give me a thumbs up to try to follow the channel. I'll appreciate that a lot more. So having said all of that, I'd, I want to sort of end this review by saying the TV packs features, the TV's picture quality is amazing. It's built for watching TV shows, it's built for gaming, it's built for every one of us. When I say it's built for every one of us, if you wanna, if you, if you wanna watch Netflix and Amazon, if you wanna watch 4K TVs, they're amazing. The TV passes the Dolby Atmos. The TV's got 
features like dual PC monitor, multi-screening. So, so it's fit for everybody. And, and finally, 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 the decision to actually provide this TV with an option of a wall mounting or a TV stand, A star move by LG because this just makes it applicable to a lot of people. It, it means anyone that can, doesn't want to wall mount because, you know, there's just not enough space for wall mounting or just, you know, there are some restrictions. They can also buy this TV and enjoy this TV just like all of us do. So should you buy it, avoid it or wait? My, my verdict would be buy it. The TV is outstanding. Um, best picture quality in the market. So many features that even I haven't had the time to test it into gaming. It ticks the boxes. And if the, if the model is slightly out of your price range, wait for Boxing Day or Black Friday sale um, because this will be one of the biggest purchases you will make this year. That's all from me. If you like this video, please do like and share. If not, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.